What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master One, and this is gonna be my first impression and mini analysis of the Fallen Banner this year. The first unit you know, that we have is Fallen Lilith, and she's a flying red dragon, which is incredibly rare. She's actually the second flying red dragon after Summer Young Tiki, which we got many years ago. Here we can also see her stats, and overall Fallen Lilith functions quite similarly to the normal version of Lilith but she's gonna be much better because of being a newer unit. Her weapon is silent power and it does give her plus 3 speed and it does work on the ally support mechanic similar to Lilith so ally support is only there for the players it is not gonna be when the AI is controlling Lilith so she can teleport within two spaces of the support partner and this is a global teleport so it doesn't matter where her support partner is, she can just teleport all the way across the map and actually teleport to two spaces of the support partner compared to one space, which she could do before in her normal version. And if she's within three spaces of her support partner, then she can give herself and the support partner null follow up as a visible buff. We have seen this before on Young Mia where null follow up is used as a visible status, so it can actually activate stuff like the ideal skills for example. And then she can pretty much get plus 5 to all of her stats and has the adaptive damage. This allows Lilith to be a really good unit in Aetherade's offense and also in summoner duels. So in Aetherade's offense, she could be tied to a unit who's going to be initiating and is going to be going into the enemy's range. And even if the ally is not in the Wings of Mercy range, Lilith can still teleport all the way across the map. We have seen the null follow-up support from Legendary Mail Pilot before, but his is the drive version, and here it is going to be a visible status effect, which we did get to see in the trailer itself. So this is also going to be really helpful in summoner duels if you're running a raid boss team. A raid boss pretty much means that you're going to be focusing all of your resources onto a single unit who can be a really strong tank. Fallen Edelgard and Legendary Dimitri are usually used quite a lot as a raid boss, at max investment and young Mia could also be considered one and there are just so many other units who could also be used as a raid boss so basically with those units you can provide them with the null follow-up effect and it could be really helpful for example legendary dimitri does not really have null follow-up in his weapon or his slot b skill so this could definitely help him tremendously if lilith is going to be supporting him and it can also create this kind of threat range around the main carry unit because lilith could anytime just teleport and just killed some kind of opponent who's gonna be near your raid boss. I guess the, one of the shortcomings of Lilith is that she doesn't have Gale Force, which would have been really useful in Aetherate's offense, but unfortunately dragons cannot get Gale Force, and you also don't really get too much mileage out of the trace skills because you're gonna be teleporting quite a lot. So her base kit works out fine with attack speed catch and the new speed smoke 4. So as it is, flying units cannot have access to null follow up, which she gets from her weapon and then she can also get the damage reduction from the speed smoke 4. So after combat it can inflict minus 7 speed debuff on the target and foes within 2 spaces of that target and then also provides its user with plus 6 speed and the dodge effect. So the dodge effect is basically the speed based damage reduction that can scale up to 40%. We have seen this before on repel, spurn, vital astra, all of those skills. So here it's just present in this slotty skill so that you can get it after a combat. And this can be really helpful for making Lilith a lot more bulky, especially combining with null follow up which can stop the auto follow up attacks of the enemies. So this is a really good option and it is inheritable. And after such a long time, flyers actually have some kind of unique option that they could use and also cavaliers. A lot of options are just deprived out of those units um, and smoke skills don't really have any kind of restriction outside of the healers so yeah this is going to be a really solid option and later on i'll be talking more in maybe some other video about the potential options that you can have with the smoke skills and here lilith is going to be attacking with the power of Anankos, and she's kind of inspired by the cypher design that she has got and i guess she's from the hidden truth dlc where like she's kind of hunting you down i believe not the most insanely strong unit but still very unique and then we have got fallen ninian as our Dragon Dancer. So Fallen Indian is also an upgrade of her base version. She's the blue infantry dragon yet again and here we can see her in action. We can see her stats and it's kind of funny that we have uh, got this kind of sub 30 attack unit after such a long time. So she has got enveloping breath as her preferred weapon which provides her with plus 3 attack. She's kind of similar to Triandra with her ruse dance that she can get out of this weapon. So she can dance an ally and she can inflict the guard effect 
and the minus 7 attack and resistance debuff on the foes in the cardinal direction. So that's why I said that it's kind of similar to Triandra, but Triandra is mainly used for Aetherite's defense, whereas this Ninian could be blessed and used in any kind of season. And then with this weapon, she can also get plus 6 speed and resistance during the combat. She's getting no attack out of this weapon, and it's kind of clear that she's meant to pretty much support and dance. She's got a unique preferred dance in Call to Flame, so after dancing, she can give plus 6 attack buff to the target ally, and she also gives them a new status effect which can allow them to get special charges per attack. So this is kind of like War Breaker of Thor, where it's not restricted to any kind of phase or any kind of attack. So they can basically get special charges on their own attacks and the enemy's attacks in both phases. So this is really amazing for the Gale Force units who don't really want to meet the attack check of Heavy Blade or the speed check of Flashing Blade. And they can simply trigger Gale Force by using this effect. And this can also be really good for a tank where they can free up their Sacred Seal slot from running a Breath Sacred Seal like Steady Breath or Warding Breath. And they can pretty much get the special cooldown by this effect. And because of these two effects, she can function really well as a Aetherate's Offense Dancer because inflicting the God effect on the enemy is going to be helping you tremendously with your tanks as the enemy is not going to be able to trigger their specials. And the special cooldown that she can give to a tank is also really helpful, again, like I said, so that they can run some kind of different Secret Seal. Now, obviously, Ninian is not going to be as insane as Harmonic Azura or Duopini or anything like that, but she's unique enough and can be useful in her own way with this Ruse Dance and also by giving the special acceleration with her dance. Of course, she will have to use her own turn and she can only give this to one ally at a time. So that is kind of restricting, but still, nonetheless, it's still pretty cool. Fallen Indian can also function well in Aetherate's defense with Medius or in the Anima season where she's going to be resilient to Brattle Fiorm's isolation because of her high HP. And the Odd Pulse tie can also help you pretty much reset the special of Ascended Fiorm or Regan. And finally, her weapon, which provides her with the Ruse effect, is also helpful in Rooker Siege where you don't really want to get blown by the special. She also has B-Duel Infantry 4, so if you don't really want to kill Marianne, then she could also be another fodder. And finally, we have Odd Pulse tie in the normal pool, kind of as a counterpart to the Even Pulse tie of Nils. And then she also has Crossbow Attack. This is also really good to have in the normal summoning pool. So her fodder is quite unique because of the dual skill. And her support is also quite unique even though it's not the most insane thing ever. And her stats are not going to be mattering too much. Her high HP could also be used productively with Sudden Panic or the Pulse Ties. And Resistance I guess could also be useful with Sabotage skills and Phantom Resistance if you really want to build her that way for the debuffs. And finally we've got Fallen Gustav after 3 books. So we did face him as an enemy in book 3 and in book 6 we're going to be getting him. Not really too sure when Fallen Fafnir is going to be happening. But in any case, Fallen Gustav is an Axe Cavalier and he definitely has some changes done to his preferred weapon and also to his stat line. He's got Headsman Glitner which can give him minus 1 special cooldown. So Bonfire becomes a 2 turn special and he can inflict minus 5 speed, attack and defense debuff on the enemy during the combat. And this weapon also has the special fighter built into it, which is really great because Cavaliers don't really have access to a lot of special acceleration skills. And this can also help him retaliate back with Bonfire and also function well in the player phase because technically he can still run Gale Force with the auto follow up and the special charge that he can get. And then finally, this weapon also provides him with an auto follow up, but only if the foe can counter attack or if the foe initiates combat. So you can only really auto double some kind of mage who has got no close counter and cannot really retaliate back to Gustav. In that case, he's only going to be attacking one time. So overall, this weapon definitely helps him a lot because it frees up his slot B from running something like Crooker Post. And then Special Fighter is really amazing because the only kind of special acceleration Cavaliers have got is in the form of Heavy Blade. So this weapon does a lot of things for Gustav. And then he has got Bonfire, Attack Defense Catch. Attack Defense Unit Trace and Attack Smoke 4. So his base kit is really focused on making him bulky, especially on the physical side. And Attack Smoke 4 does that by inflicting minus 7 attack debuff on the target and the foes within 2 spaces of that target. And also buffs up Gustav for plus 6 defense and resistance and gives him the follow up negation effect as his status. So it pretty much combines the auto follow up from his weapon and gives him the 
follow-up negation, pretty much giving him this kind of Omni Breaker effect, which is going to be amazing for so many slow infantry, flyers, and cavalry units who don't really have many things to help them stop the follow-up attacks of the enemies. Of course, this is going to be really susceptible to not follow up, but still, it's something and it's really useful for a slow unit. So Gustav here is going to be uh, triggering his bonfire and I think that he's going to be having a stat spread similar to this. He's going to be functioning as a bulky cavalier who can function in both phases, uh, but mostly he can retaliate back with bonfires in the enemy phase. So he's going to be having low speed and high attack stat, high defense and also workable resistance. The attack debuff that he has weapon does help him have better magical bulk as well. Um, and this kind of role of a tank on a Cavalier is always going to be a bit awkward at times because they don't really have access to a lot of skills. But Gustav kind of makes up for that by having special fighter built into his weapon and then also getting the follow-up attack. But still, most of the time, the tanks that you're going to be using are going to be saved tanks who can cover up the other allies. And in the player phase, he's going to be having competition from Otter who can have Brutal Shell and does have a flat canto unlike Gustav who has to use a trace skill here to get the canto effect. Gustav on the other hand excels at retaliating back with bonfire and by using high cooldown specials like Ignis and even Gale Force because of the special fighter built into his weapon. And finally we have the star of the banner Fallen Rhea and she's a colorless armored dragon. So this banner has got all of the colors and all of the movement types available on its units. And Fallen Rhea is going to be functioning really well as a safe tank. And she's got Ruinous Frost as her preferred weapon, which gives her minus one special cooldown, which means that Glimmer is a one turn special and she can run two turn Iceberg and retaliate back with it if she's going to be running Warding Breath. And then she can inflict minus six attack debuff on the enemy and gets plus six attack during the combat. And she also gets true damage based on 40% of foe's resistance. Yeah, that's right. She doesn't really get the true damage based on her own resistance, but rather the resistance of the opponent. So a lot of times this is not going to be that high because some of the offensive units have like 20 resistance. So she's going to be getting like a true damage in that sense. Um, but against some of the more bulkier threats that have more resistance, this true damage will scale off better and she can get better damage output. And this true damage is only going to be there for her first attack, which is fine because she does have very fighter built into this weapon. So as it is, she's not going to be doubling much. So overall, this weapon tries to make her a bit more bulky with the attack debuff on the opponent and the very fighter effect. And she can also do a bit more damage because of the true damage that she can get out of foe's resistance. She also has Glimmer as her special, which does go really well with her weapon. She's got Bracing Stance 3, which is perfect for a mixed tank. And then she's got True Dragon Wall as her preferred skill. You can tell that this is a preferred skill based on its border. It doesn't really have the yellow border. It has the white border. And it does make sense that she's got a preferred slobby skill. Similar to how Fallen Edelgard last year did have Armored Wall as well. So True Dragon Wall also works on the resistance of Rhea. And it can give her up to 60% damage reduction on the first combat of each phase. So for example, in the enemy phase when she's going to be getting attacked, she can get 60% damage reduction and after the first combat, she's going to be getting the 40% damage reduction like the usual Dragon Wall skill. So it pretty much gives her better damage reduction for the first combat. And then she can also heal up 7 HP at start of turn and also after the combat, if she's got any kind of dragon or beast ally on her team. So technically Fallen Edelgard can work with Fallen Rhea and Fallen Edelgard can also transform because Rhea is a dragon, so it's kind of funny. And uh, Fallen Edelgard was definitely a really strong unit out of the Fallen Banner last year. I don't really think that Fallen Rhea is going to be that insane because the first thing is that she's only limited to her enemy phase and she doesn't really have distant counter in her weapon like Fallen Edelgard. Fallen Edelgard also has the Raging Storm, which gives her a lot of utility in the player phase. She can basically get a Gale Force for free and Rhea can only really do that. You can bait out Rhea in many situations and she's not going to be as much of a threat as Fallen Edelgard. But still Fallen Rhea doesn't really have to transform or do anything like that. But rest assured Fallen Rhea is not going to be the Fallen Edelgard of this year or anything like that. She is really strong, don't get me wrong. She's actually one of the best near save armor units and can also function as a far save armor. But she's not going to be that insane is pretty much what I'm trying to say. She does have the near save skill in her base kit 
And like I said, she can function really, really well as a near safe unit because she can run Iceberg and also run Warding Breath and retaliate back with that special to do a lot of damage and one shot a lot of the opponents. She has to rely on her one shots because she doesn't have any kind of way of getting the follow up attacks. And she's going to be really, really bulky on both spectrums because, of course, she's going to be. And uh, I think that she's going to be having a bit more resistance than defense because of True Dragon Wall. And then she's going to be having super low speed. We have seen that before on Halloween Rhea as well. So I really have no doubt in my mind. And even though she might have some similarities with Fallen Edelgard with her base kit. At the end of the day, she is still not going to be having the player phase with the Raging Storm. She doesn't have Armored Wall, which gives her the dual phase guard effect. So Rhea only gets the guard effect out of the stand skill. She doesn't have the distant counter in her weapon. So all of those things Rhea is going to be missing, which is going to be making her a lot easier to take on compared to Fallen Edelgard for many people, I guess. But still, she's a really solid and fun unit. And Rhea can also function as a far safe tank. And that is going to be relevant in summoner duels. So I wouldn't really say that she's better than Ascended Idun or Brave Hector because she still has that armor weakness. And that could be a huge downfall many times. But the good thing is that Rhea is a colorless unit. So she doesn't really have the weapon strangle disadvantage like those other safe tanks do. Um, but unfortunately, because of having the armor weakness, it means that she's going to be susceptible to dual chrome and also to lethality Yuri because... Deadeye and Lethality will just pierce through the True Dragon Wall. And unless you run Hardy Fighter with Aegis or something like that, she's going to be getting killed by Duo Chrome because of the effective damage. So Valen Shield could be an option in the slot A, but again, once we get her, we can run some simulations and see how she does against the meta threats. But still, like as it stands right now, she can still function well as a far safe tank because of the things that she has going on in her base kit. And she can also function really well as a near safe tank. Overall, a very solid armor unit and goes right into the save meta that we are in and can function both ways. And the true damage and the damage reduction are just the cherry on top. For the Grand Tour Battle unit, we're going to be having Fallen Muarin as our free unit. And for those of you who do not know, he's going to be from Radiant Dawn, where he did go feral after being experimented on. And he is a Tiger Laguz. Just like Mordecai and Kaisa, he is going to be an infantry beast, which means that he's going to be having a tempo skill in his preferred weapon for sure. And he could be a green infantry beast because we did have Kaisa as the red infantry beast, Mordecai is the blue one. So Moarim could end up being a green beast and also does go well with his color palette. So we'll have to see what kind of preferred weapon he ends up having. And this is the stat spread which I want to see on him. We have seen slow Laguz and Kaisa and Mordecai before. I really hope that Moarim could have workable speed and depending on his preferred weapon, he could actually have a lot of potential. And as it is, there is a bit of competition in the real pool when it comes to a green infantry unit with Ninja Shamir, with Gonzalez and with uh, Young Boyd. So Moarim could end up shaking things a bit and actually being better than all of those units depending on what kind of preferred weapon he ends up getting. So let me know in the comments what do you think about this Fallen Banner and the free unit. I'll be eager to hear that. And if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to leave a like and a comment helps me tremendously. And if you really, really enjoyed, you could always support me directly by using Super Thanks or by becoming a YouTube member. Because YouTube sub boxes are going to be about as functional as Alphonse after seeing his fallen father yet again in Book 6. So with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.